just complicating situation. I am scheduling a meeting with a group of schools, and since they have not yet, you know, all the uh, invitations haven't gone out and accepted, I don't want to name them, but there are four schools that I've asked to come together, one of which I have responsibility for, the other three are sponsored by religious orders, and I'm going to begin that conversation. I think it's a very important conversation because the second major issue that we have is the decreasing number of children. I mean, that's not just in our Catholic schools, but in the public schools. I mean, this year, the, you know, the schools run by, operated by, under the Diocese of Cleveland, is the largest school system in the state of Ohio. The city of Cleveland has fewer students for the first time than the Diocese of Cleveland. So, so it's not just that we lost the 2,000 children, but everyone is losing across the, you know, the whole area because there aren't as many children. So we've also got that issue, and in certain areas, it's even more pronounced than others. So it's a very large issue. I've had a visit from one city mayor who has asked if I would come to his city and build a high school, a Catholic high school. Um, right now, I said, look, you know, let me get through clustering first, please. Uh, you know, I only have so many legs and arms to go around. You know, I mean, I know, you know, what a wonderful gift we have in these 22 schools. I mean, these 22 high schools are are absolutely the greatest gift we have. I mean, we have 13,000 high schoolers in school today. And, you know, I've had the privilege in these visits to the high schools of talking with 16 of the students for at least an hour. And, and each school has a different system of how they choose, you know, who, you know, some of them ask the students, who would like to go see the bishop? And there's always many more than 16. Some of them, they pick class offices. Some of them have to write an essay. What is it that I would like to uh, discuss with him? So every school has their own technique of finding out who the 16 will be. I mean, I have tremendous encouragement and hope after leaving those schools. You know, the young people are committed, they're working hard, and they appreciate what they're receiving. And I just think it's a great story. I mean, would that we could have more, and would that they could be redistributed in certain parts of the diocese. But it's not that easy. You just can't pick up a building <laughs> and take it somewhere. And, and how you do that becomes a real expense also, because then you're building a new building. And, and so uh, I'm aware of it, and at least I'm going to take a shot at this conversation with four of them and see how that fares and trying to encourage. Because the danger is that if we don't start to collaborate more, that they'll start to just die in the vine because they'll get too small. Some areas that may have four could only really support two. But as long as all four continue, they're getting weaker and weaker. So it just is a big issue, and I'm aware of it but it's going to be a very difficult one to address successfully. We're going to try, but it is going to be a very hard one to address. We may have time for just one more. Uh, hopefully more than one, depends on how long this answer is. <laughs> and this is, this, and this is a tough, this is a, well, it may be tough, it may not. Uh, uh, we're all election weary and need to regroup before the inauguration. We all pray for President-elect Obama. In the coming months of the new administration, what will the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops be to marshal or direct the faithful to address Senator Obama's uh, pledge to sign the Freedom of Choice Act um, so that uh, we want to be assured that the voices to protect life are heard in Washington? <coughs> How do you respond? 
uh, tomorrow afternoon I head off to Baltimore for our annual fall meeting of all the bishops. And we'll be there till Wednesday evening. I'm sure that this topic will probably come up in one way or another, or maybe several ways, um, as we get together. I'm not sure how we will do it. I, I would think, you know, that the inauguration is, I think, the, by law, the 20th of, uh, Jan uh, of January. And a couple of days after that is the anniversary of the Roe versus Wade decision, which the Catholic Church has been very prominent in it by its presence uh, in Washington for that. So I would not be surprised that somehow that, that will get tied into a church um, you know, approach to how to address this uh, issue about you know, the dignity of human life and respecting it and, uh, and preserving it. And we do have time for one last question. And this one brings us back to a year ago. And uh, Bishop, last year when you spoke to this forum, you said, quote, mission over maintenance, unquote, has to be our focus, energy, and goal. Do you see mission over maintenance progressing or fading in our diocese? I do think that more people today buy into the notion of the centrality of mission. I think when people reflect upon what is happening or better, what is not happening, they realize that it's not being done. For example, this past uh, March, the day before Palm Sunday, I had an appointment at the cathedral rectory. A group of people wanted to see me. They came in and they said, Bishop, you need to close our parish. We're no longer a parish. They had dwindled to the minimum of activity and they were not involved in mission. Last October, a year ago, the last Sunday of October, I officiated the closing mass of a parish. And three months later, I went to a parish in the neighborhood just for a regular visit, celebrating mass and greeting the people afterwards. And over 25 people came up and said to me, you know, Bishop, I was from this other parish, but how happy I am that I'm here. Because they were now involved the parish they had been in, which on one level they still missed, but they realized that it had dwindled so much that there was no activity anymore. They were going to church. Now, I'm not putting that down at all, but that's about all that was happening. Every one of those 25 people told me that they were either a lector, they were an extraordinary minister, they were teaching PSR, they were in the bereavement committee. Everyone had been incorporated into a living, vibrant faith community, reaching out not only to fellow Catholics, but also to the wider community. Yes, the memories were there of their former pastor, but they were happy where they were. I, I mean, there's no better answer to that question than to tell the stories that are already happening. People are